so much for joining us today. Uh, my name is Sandra and I work in Super Office Norway as a senior consultant. And we are here today to talk about the European B2B customer service report for 2023. And I'm lucky to have with me Bjarte and Frederick. Thank you, Sandra. I'm Fredrik Slander, CMO of uh, SuperOffice, and I'm very eager to talk about the future of customer service. And my name is uh, Bjarte Lisson. I work um, in a company called Customer Trends, so we provide insight about customer service, customer experience to the public. I've been working in customer service my whole professional life. Exciting. Let's get started. So first, can you tell me a bit about this report? Why did SuperOffice and Customer Trends decide to make this report? What is it that makes this unique? So at first, I mean, we saw that there is a gap in the market. Not enough, uh, not enough research has been done looking at customer service for B2B companies. Um, and by chance, uh, me and Bjarte came in touch. Um, we are representing customer trends with deep know-how into uh, customer service. And we at SuperOffice have been working deeply with um, B2B companies for the last 30 years. So I thought it was a great, great match here. So I thought it makes sense. And our partnership is, is then producing this report. Uh, and that, that means that we can compare B2B and B2C data, uh, which is awesome to really see what's, what's because B2C companies are often in the forefront of what's adapting new tech, new trends. So I think this can be very valuable for us. Absolutely. And I would like to say that we have been uh, contacted by business to business executives, um, customer service business to business executives for, for a number of, of years. They them wanting insight about business to business customer service, but we haven't been able to do it because yeah, the, the Norwegian and Nordic markets are a little bit small and yeah, it's all about funding and, and getting the resources to do the, to do the study. So we are very happy to, to, to have found um, SuperOffice and, and that you were so motivated in, in doing this uh, job together with us. Mm. I agree, this is um, exciting. So, so can you tell me a bit about how this report was conducted? Sure, sure. So we invited uh, a selection of customers and contacts in our joint databases. So it's both customers, but also those we simply have in our networks. So we wanted to have a good mix of uh, companies representing a variety of industries. So in the report, we have around 20 industries represented and more than 100 uh, respondents. Uh, we wanted to focus on quality and not on quantity in this report. So um, the, the, ref, the result is, is there for a, a quite extensive report, almost 30 pages, where we go quite deep into many areas here. Yes, and we found the respondents all over Northern, uh, Northern Europe. And a, a very big thank you to everybody who has spent time and, and, and uh, effort uh, answering all, the, all our, our uh, question. So, so, so without the respondents, there would be no report. So, um, yeah, a big thank you to everybody who has spent time um, on the report so far. I fully agree. Thank you a lot. I mean, we also got respondents from CEOs, service directors, so a lot of busy people. Uh, so we, we deeply value their input in, in the report. Um, going to the next slide here. Um, yeah, so since this report, it's just been launched, I was wondering if you could give us a bit of a sneak peek. What can we find inside of it? What sort of insights are there inside and what are we expected to learn from this? Sure, I mean, it, it's a quite in-depth report and there are tons of useful uh, insights in the report, but it, there's a few highlights that I think it's worth for everyone to, to see and to, to get some kind of voiceover to. Uh, so let's, let's see what's in there. Um, Looking at the key findings, uh, I will just jump to the next picture here. So the big, one of the big highlights is really a big disconnect. It's a disconnect between the main objectives for customer service teams and the main KPI. And, and I would like to compare this with, imagine if you're um, a sales manager or a sales rep and your objective is to sell, but your main KPI is not sales. It's something else um, and in, in, in the case of customer service teams we see that 
the main objective is customer satisfaction. But the main KPI is service level agreements. So, so that, that's a big one. I, I don't know, Bjarte, do you have any idea or hunch or comment? Why do you believe this is the case? That's a very good uh, question, Felix. So, so what we know from, from um, B2C is that what is most important for the customers, that is to get their case solved. So f what we call first call resolution or resolution rate. That is the most important, it's the most important driver for uh, customer satisfaction and customer loyalty, which is like the ultimate goal, um, hanging on to the customers for as long as, as possible. Um, but it's difficult to, to measure. Um, it's, it's much easier to, to just measure how fast you answer the phone. So maybe this is some kind of, <coughs> of explanation. Um, but there is a potential here. I, I, I truly believe that there is potential to, to take a broader look on the, on the KPIs, not only look on, on, the, on the answer speed the rate, but to look mm -hmm. on what is happening in the call and how satisfied are the customers with the, with the call and how you, you solve the, the case. It's also quite interesting to see that 16% don't even measure customer satisfaction. Um, and, and, and that's a quite big thing. I mean, at the same time, we see that the most popular way of measuring customer satisfaction, as an example, is by using email. So the, let's say the, the barrier for entry or to start doing it is not that high. You don't need any advanced tools or something. But I don't know, Bjar, do you have any idea why this is the case? Or is, yeah. is, does this differ a lot from B2C companies? Absolutely. It's a very big difference. So, so the, my hypothesis is that it's all about the how you how you, you um, uh, how the dialogue with the customer is so a, a lot of companies they have a contact person um, and and other companies of course have a, a customer service team so maybe we don't measure the satisfaction with a con contact person this the same way um, it's a speculation but um, but to, to know why your customers are, are, are satisfied and how satisfied they are is extremely important in, in B2C. So, so um, yeah, one should imagine it's also very important for the B2B customer service centers. So uh, mm. also here a, a, a potential to improve, I think. Yeah, uh, I agree. I mean, there's a, I would really recommend everyone to start measuring customer satisfaction because it's so important, especially in times like this, when you want to achieve earned growth, meaning, I mean, you want to have happy customers recommending you, staying longer, buying more services, yeah. uh, less less likely to churn, um, extremely important. I mean, measuring it is so easy to get started. Yeah. Um, and also one thing, if, if you also, if you have a, a ongoing survey, you can also get feedback back from customers that are maybe not happy that day or something went wrong in the interaction with customer service. So you have an opportunity to, 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 to correct it and, and, and make the customer loyal and, and, and satisfied again. So without any kind of measurements, you are like left kept, kept in the blind. So, so yeah, strong recommendation for us, from us to, to measure customer satisfaction on a regular basis. So I guess that this finding is really surprising to anyone. We all hope to get help from technology and customer service is really no different from anyone else. And many teams are actually looking forward to riding the wave of new tech to help satisfy customers. So hopefully this is actually a cost saving tactic so that it replaces the manual processes with digitalization. So could you tell us a bit more about this? Sure, I mean, th this graph really highlights that there are two clear reasons for why you sh should invest in tech or why people, I mean, companies really invest in tech. And, and, and I mean, one thing being saving resources, um, saving money, uh, and, and that is linked directly to, to the sea level. I mean, that is, can we save cost, be more efficient? So that's a rational way of, of um, investing in tech, often a way to, um, quantify the impact you're, you know, to, to cover for the cost of buying or implementing new tech. Well, it's very positive to see. I mean, that's a quite rational decision, but it's quite interesting to see that the majority, 59%, is actually 
investing in tech to improve customer satisfaction and customer experience, which is amazing to see because this is investing in the future, uh, as, as we mentioned in the last slide, that really, let's say, making sure that we keep customers happy so we can get have them to stay longer to recommend more. So this is really about increasing revenue. So the one thing is saving cost. Increasing revenue is actually the most important factor. Mm -hmm. So, is this uh, any comments to that, Bjarke? Yes, a very, very interesting question. So, we, so we see that the new generation, um, uh, the young, uh, of course, uh, the young um, uh, professionals, um, are much more accustomed to to tech or new tech than maybe the older generation, like like me. So, so, so that development is may be very natural, but to see that so many want to, to invest to improve customer satisfaction is, is yeah, it's very, it's interesting, it's, it's, it's thrilling, and I, I, I get, guess the battle about the future customers will be in that area uh, where you provide solutions that can, can um, enable the, the customers to be more efficient, to, to, to help themselves, maybe. Is this something that you believe is different in the B2C sector? The answers? What it... Yeah, and I have, I have data from, from the, the Nordic markets and, and the, 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 the trend to invest to improve customer satisfaction is even higher. Driven, of course, by the young generation who is, who is uh, yeah, linked to their phones in a, in a way that yeah, my and, I and my generation mm. uh, never have been so. so Putting self-service solutions into the to the to the smartphones is, is absolutely super important mm. for B two C customer service organizations. Interesting. Talking about new tech, um, when we looked at the B two B market, um, we couldn't really see a, a chatbot revolution. Um, a couple of years back, this was really a hot topic. Um, but we could see it, I mean, less than 20% claim they will invest in a chatbot until 2025. Almost 30% have already or will invest in a chat with a human person. Uh, and, and I mean, the remaining 50% may claim they will not invest in, in, in chat at all. Mm. Is this, uh, is this uh, what should I say? Is it a uh, huge difference as well from the B2C sector? Or did this, was it a shocking result? Yeah. Yeah, or? yeah. I, th I think a little bit because so the, so the biggest tsunami right now it's of course called Chat uh, GPT. If you, if you have a webinar or a course with Chat <laughs> GPT in the in the headline, then it will be sold out in in no time. So everybody is very curious. Everybody has tested it, and it's it's possible to like see the, the huge potential, but without enabling a, 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 a written dialogue with with the customer so a channel for written interaction like like um, like chat it's difficult to harvest the, the the benefits so my 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 expectations was that this would be much higher mm. um, but as a yeah a small business consultant company um, uh, person myself I see that a lot of my suppliers don't offer that kind of solution so so um, yes, it's a big difference uh, towards the B2 mm. to see uh, uh, market. Maybe it has something to do with the, the, the investments, the complexity, the, the, the things you have to do to succeed with a chatbot. But mm. uh, yeah, uh, I was surprised to see. Could, could it be the case that I mean, in, in the B2B world, that the products or services that you sell is maybe more complex and more tailored solution that needs a human being to actually yes. solve issues or? Yeah, maybe. And, and this is maybe uh, talking about something we will talk about later, but, but the chatbot interacts very nicely with the web pages. Mm. And we see, and we will see later that the web pages are, are important. So, so mm. it's a little bit, yeah, already now. <laughs> exactly, announcing here, so. Yeah, so it, this is a channel that is actually growing in popularity and it's not as trendy. We don't hear that much about it in comparison. Uh, and it looks like the website is just becoming a really important service channel for many European B2Bs. And why do you think that is? Is this a trend that it does seem to be quite far behind the B2C market? Why do you think that is the case? Hmm. Uh, <clears throat> I mean, 
just an idea here or a reflection is that I mean chatbots are usually just assistants and then can often be swapped for a search field on a website. Um, and, and, and I mean with ChatGPT as well is actually on a website with where you're where you're interacting with it. So perhaps there's an overlap here and, and, and the answers you want to have is I mean the chatbot usually helps you navigate and points you to a website and as search fields or search tech gets better, you can often get everything directly on the website. And also, the website might also be able to support more with um, upsell um, offers. Or it could be ups upsell, cross-sell, more, more licenses or additional products, services, etc. Et so um, that could be one thing, I don't know. Absolutely. Absolutely, I, and this is <laughs> it really engaged me. So, so um, I will try to, to to have a clear argument. So, so we know from recent studies in the B two C market that sixty percent of the people of the customers calling the the call center has been on the web page before they called. Okay, but this means that the actual number of people. Uh, that, has, that has visited the web page is much higher because we must uh, assume that a lot of them find what they need. So let's say, let's say maybe 80-90 percent mm. of all um, private customers have been to the web page before they call the customer service. Mm. So I think this is a, it's a fundamental driver, where especially the, the, the people between 30 and 50 is very busy with children and the time um, Jacqueline as it has it is in the region. So they are very busy. So if they if there is a possibility they can solve the issue themselves, they would like to do it. And where do you solve the case? Where do you find the information? On the web page. So so I, I think this is very, very important. It's an essential part of what we call the customer uh, journey. Um, it's been very important in the, in the product um, uh, bit to see market for a long time and and, and now we just, I believe that the B2B will, will just uh, continue to, to invest in, in, in great uh, web uh, sites. Mm. And I mean, uh, as a marketeer, um, I also see a need to invest in the web because it's not only the support channel, it's also often a revenue channel. So, so having, merging these two experiences and touch points yeah. just make, makes a lot of sense. So, all right, so we already know that customer service is not an easy job and it turns out it's actually getting even harder. And the survey did show that European B2Bs are really struggling to find suitable employees for the customer service teams and for the customer centers. Why is this a concern, do you think? So, I mean, given the importance of customer service teams to improve customer satisfaction and strengthen customer relationships, it's clearly a headache if we don't have talented people to carry out this task. And I mean, I'm sure you have some ideas here, Bjart, because I mean, you're really deep into the field of customer service and especially into B2Cs. Uh, I don't have any good answer here <laughs> to why this is the case, yeah. because this is clearly, a, let's say, um, or should I say, a, a role of the future. This yeah. is really an area where, where you can grow and, and provide a lot of value. You build relationships with customers. You, you need to, I mean, you're enabled to solve tasks. I mean, you're a super appreciated colleague or, or team member. So yeah. why wouldn't everyone want to work as one? So, yes. so. My, 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 again, an, uh, uh, an hypothesis, hypothesis. But, but who is successful in customer service? It's an empathic, efficient, team-oriented, positive people. Yeah, and with those four criteria, everybody's fighting for these people. <laughs> and and um, you see, in, in, in the Nordics, for instance, where the population is getting older and the health uh, industry needs tens, tens and hundreds of thousands of people, um, so we are all competing for the same talent. Um, so I think that, that the, this um, it's very easy for them to find new jobs. They are very uh, demanded. Uh, they have very demanded skills. So I think this is something that every company, every business to to business co contact center has to to deal with in in some way. 
Um, but does this differ from the B2C as well, or is it? No, no, it's exactly exactly the same. Exactly okay. the same. Because yeah. I was actually during the lunch um, having some reflections on on this topic. If if it could be the case that um, there were other needs, I mean, I mean, in B2C there might be a high volume of tickets. Uh, it could be. I'm, I'm thinking about insurance, bank, etc., where where you get a lot a lot of frequency of yeah, tasks. Yeah. You can maybe automate more things, while in the B2B world, again, it could be more complex. I mean, it could be everything from a <laughs> machine or a robot in a, in a you know, manufacturing line, yep, yep. or some software that, that has some problem that you need to solve. Yep. So you might need different kind of personalities, but, but, but I agree with your four, yeah, <laughs> four, yeah. four criteria of people who, who, who are successful yeah. in the customer service team. So, okay, but what, what, what can companies do to overcome this? That's a very good, very good question. But just a comment on what you said, because a lot of business to uh, consumer contact centers has made big investments to get rid of the, of the like uh, transactional tasks, so uh, sold by, by the, the web pages or, or chatbots. Uh, so they are left with the complex value creating um, interaction with, with the customer. So I think the, the, the work situation Business to business, business to consumer, contact center is getting more and more similar. Um, but what can you do? Uh, that's the big uh, uh, question. You can of course pay a little bit more. Uh, you can make the, the, the job um, more interesting, adding, adding um, of course uh, challenges and, and making sure that it's possible to grow inside the, the position. Um, and, uh, but something I'm, I'm very concerned about, or uh, it's deep to my heart, is that you don't, you may, must make sure that the, the, the best people isn't placed in projects or in offices. You need to have the best project thrive and grow in interactions with the, with the customer. Oh. Um, so, so job design and hard uh, work over time, I think that is the key here. Mm. So customer service is essential for building lasting relationship. I mean, that certainly comes as no surprise to us at SuperOffice, but it is really great to have it confirmed. Uh, and even especially when it comes to CEOs leading European B2B as, as well, and how they also feel this way. So could you tell us a bit more about the results and what this actually means? Yeah, so this was one of the questions and we, we, we could see that customer service leaders they, they agree that customer service teams are essential in building a positive reputation uh, about the company and building and maintaining long-lasting customer relationships. So it's absolutely crucial to improve what we, you know, in, in, the, in the business world, talk about lifetime value of customers as, 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 essentially. So these teams are super important. They are also often the touch point that is most frequent uh, frequently used by the customers when getting in touch. I mean, they are so important in, in maintaining the relationship. Yeah, and it's it's not everything we do agree on in in Europe, but uh, on this subject we are in total agreement. <laughs> Customer service is very important for for the businesses and in building uh, lasting relationships with the with the customers. Yeah. And in the study, we could see that sixty percent claim that the customer service teams can positively impact sales and 20% even let their customer service teams to sell. So clearly a transition from cost center to uh, a revenue, revenue center, yeah, yeah. Which, which is also why it needs to get the right focus, attention and, and funding, etc., to, to, to be that kind of uh, team. Yes, totally agree. And uh, well, I do feel like I've learned a lot. There's so much else as well, right? Yeah, I mean, there is a lot in the report and we only covered some highlights. I mean, in the report, you can also find insights into what kind of software tools the B2B companies are using. I mean, CRM is uh, robotic process automation, what channels uh, customers are using the most and the least, uh, predictions for the future up to 2025 what kind of team setup they have. So, um, and, and there's a lot, so you should really go download it at superoffice.com and feel free to also reach out to uh, us at SuperOffice or Customer Trends. Absolutely, absolutely.
Thank you so much for joining us today. Hopefully you learned a lot as well. Thank you. Bye-bye.